All right, so I wanted to use this video time to go through a problem that we might want to solve using our new kinematic skills that we're learning in chapter 12. So here's the scenario. I have a skydiver who jumps out of an airplane and when he deploys his parachute, he's moving downward with a speed of 30 meters per second. Just make sure that's clear. Now, because of the drag that the parachute presents, his acceleration can be modeled as being equal to g minus cv squared. Notice that because normally we say g downward is negative, that the convention being used in this problem is that the downward direction is positive and the drag, which would be upward, is in the negative direction. We're tasked with finding three different, value, three different things. The first thing is we're told that the terminal velocity that the skydiver reaches with his parachute is five meters per second. So knowing that, we're asked to find this constant, drag constant C. We want to know what the maximum acceleration of the skydiver is, which is actually a deceleration. And finally, we want to know the velocity of the skydiver when he has fallen two meters after deploying the parachute. All right, so let's look. The first two problems are not that bad. The idea of terminal velocity is that's the velocity that the skydiver reaches and then the velocity doesn't change anymore. And if you think about that, what that means is that the acceleration is zero. So if we set that equal to the acceleration equal to zero and we let velocity equal to the five meters per second, we can solve for C. So C is going to be equal to G over V squared, where G is going to be 9.81, and the velocity is five squared. And so using that, we can solve for C, and we find that C is 0 0.392. So that's not too bad. Now the maximum acceleration, if we look at this expression, notice that the biggest that this is ever going to be in terms of magnitude is going to be when the speed is the highest, which is the initial speed it has when it's right when that instant when the parachute is deployed. And so that's when the speed is 30 meters per second. And so A max is going to be equal to 9.81 minus 0 0.392, which is C, times the 30 squared, which is going to be equal to minus 343 meters per second squared. And notice that that negative sign indicates that that's going to be an acceleration in the positive direction. So in a sense, it's kind of like a deceleration and equal to that. So that's its maximum acceleration. Now finally, we're asked to find the velocity when s equals 2. Now, normally, normally we would think of the acceleration being defined as the der derivative of velocity with respect to time. But in order to figure this out, I would first need to integrate to figure out how s depends on time so that I could see what, at what time is s equals 2 and then go back to the velocity expression to plug in that time. And, you know, I'm not really sure that that's all going to work out that well. But it turns out that we can use the chain rule to rewrite the definition of the acceleration in terms of velocity and position instead of um, velocity and time. And so what we do is we say dv ds times ds dt. Notice if you think of those two fractions together, the ds's would cancel out and you would get dv dt. This is literally using the chain rule. But ds dt is just v, so we can re -re rewrite this as v times dv ds. 
So that definition of acceleration is something that we might not be used to have, be, have used. I don't, we might have used that once or twice in general physics. Um, you can use that to write the work uh, kinetic energy theorem. But in general, I think that it's probably not going to be as familiar to you. But we want to get used to being able to think outside the box and have more than one way to approach a problem. When you want to get a direct relationship between velocity and position, this is really your best bet because there it is, velocity and position all together. And so this is equal to g minus cv squared. And if we solve this differential equation, if we integrate this by separating um, isolation of variables or separation of variables, we can get an expression for how velocity depends on position. So I'm going to, um, by separating my variables, I might start with v dv is equal to g minus cv squared times ds. I'd integrate from 0 to s, v naught to v. Now, I hope you don't think that I can integrate just straight from there because I have not successfully separated my variables. I have a v over here with my ds and I have a v and a dv here. I need all my v's on one side and all my s's on the other. So I need to change this a little bit. So this is where I've successfully separated my variables. And now I want to, um, in order to do this integration, I have to do a u substitution. Or um, if this is my u, my du would be minus 2c, so I'd have times v dv. I'd have a minus 2c here, but then in order to not change everything, I'd put a minus 2c out front. And so then what that changes to is um, the integral of du over u times minus 1 over 2c. And so I get minus 1 over 2c times the natural log of g minus cv squared evaluated at v naught and v. Okay? So, kind of did a lot. You might want to stop and take a look at that. Um, I don't like the minus 1 over 2c here, so I'm going to write this as the natural log of g minus c v squared evaluated at v naught and v and put minus 2c ds, 0, and s. And so this is minus 2c times s. Okay, now I'm going to evaluate this natural log at my two limits, but keep in mind that the I'll get the natural log of g minus cv squared minus the natural log of g minus cv naught squared. But remember, I could write those as a quotient, and I'm going to go right into that and say the natural log of g minus cv squared over g minus cv naught squared is equal to minus 2cs. And so now I'm going to raise everything, raise this whole thing, e to all this stuff on both sides, or use the definition of my natural log to get rid of the natural log. And so I'm going to have g minus c v squared over g minus c v naught squared is equal to e to the minus 2 c s. Okay. And this, this line between here doesn't do too well. So I get g minus c v squared is equal to g minus c v naught squared e to the minus 2 c s. 
And so if I rearrange everything, I'm going to get v squared is equal to 1 over c. I'm running out of room there. I don't think I'm going to be able to squeeze it all in. v squared, 1 over c, g minus g minus c v naught squared, e for minus 2 c s. Can you see all that? Yeah. And then I can put in the value, I forgot, I don't know, if I let C is 0 0.392, G is 9.8, S is equal to 2, I can solve for V squared and then take the square root to get V. And I forgot to write down what the number was, but... This is the expression. Yeah, it's ugly, and I could probably make it look a little nicer, but I didn't simplify it a lot because I could use my values and figure out what they are. And so this is how I would figure out the velocity at s equals 2. So hopefully that made sense. I know there's a lot of algebra involved, but the most important thing is to remember to use this expression for acceleration when I want to figure out how velocity and position are directly related to each other. And so that's a shortcut I can use. And if you see expressions where the time isn't really explicitly listed, that might be some, a hint that that's the approach you want to take.